Down East Maine, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been working to replace culverts and increase fish passage. This culvert, this stream road crossing, probably failed several times. And every time the culvert would fail, they'd usually just haul the culvert back up. And the culvert inlet kept on getting higher and higher and higher. Hence, that you started to create a pond behind here. You can actually see one of the three culverts that were here originally, they were grossly undersized. With all the dead stumps and stuff too, it's like, you know, that used to be a forest there. If you were digging that right now, it's like, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, you're going down to China, you know, but, you know, the stream channels are down there. And if you don't get it right, that's what you get. You get these elevated, um, ponded areas above this, and this is what we see all over the place. So before, where the, the road was a hindrance, when we put this open arch in here and we redesigned the channel in here, I expect in two to three years we will be sampling brook trout underneath the road, whereas before they couldn't even get past the road, but they will be living underneath the road. Now the bigger part of this one is the habitat modification. Before it was a pond that got extremely warm in the summer, but once we get rid of this heat sink up here, brook trout will be able to live a lot more productive life in here. Once ready, culvert replacements can often be executed in as little as a couple days. Taking a stream that actually is this wide, pinching it through two undersized culverts. So generally speaking, what happens is during high water, uh, that's too much capacity for the culverts to carry. So the water exiting out that is coming like you opened a fire hydrant. It will take and churn, that turbulence will create what people know as the plunge pool, um, which basically excavates a hole in the bottom of the stream at the outlet of the culvert. Over time, that drops the elevation of the stream bed below to where then you have the perch culvert that becomes a fish passage issue. So the pH at this site is just over uh, 4.3. That is very acidic. I've never seen in Down East Maine, I've never seen brook trout with a pH less than about 4.6 or 4.7. At that site, I would think that taking out that pond, that wet it, wetland above the pond, that unnatural, the pH should go up a little bit. So I think we're going to have to see a net beneficial water quality improvement at that site. With the low pH, we have absolutely no invertebrates underneath these rocks. So no food source, very difficult to have fish. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Main FRO, Main Fisheries Research Office, um, came on board with support. That was approximately uh, 2006. Uh, we have quite a bit more science, you know, support through them. Um, that actually doubled my capacity until then. I was the only uh, full-time employee of SHARE. We have done over a hundred of these installations. However, we've done it in a very concentrated area. So we've taken the highest priority areas of, in this case, the Machias River, and we have, in some 50 square mile watersheds, basically fixed every stream crossing that was a perennial fish bearing stream. It's really a successful story of partnerships at all different levels. And what I see are improvements that do benefit both the fishery and the landowners and often the highway departments too. And that is just one of those classic win, 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 win kind of deals.